Hey guys, what's up? Light here, and welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be playing the Kronwagen. It's definitely one of the more underpowered tanks in this current meta, but in the next meta, it's going to get an alpha buff by 10 damage. It's going to be 410, so your rules are going to be significantly better um, for, you know, kill shots and stuff like that, that you couldn't maybe guarantee with, you know, this heavy tank before. And the DPM is also going to get better. I'm not too sure if it's going to be better with the last shell or the first shell because it's very confusing to me to read, you know, that change. But uh, either way, it's going to get much better DPM. And if I understood it correctly, I think it's going to be the last shell. But again, I'm going out on a limb here saying that. And if that's the case, it, it'll be very close to the Rhino, which if you didn't know, it's probably one of my top five favorite tanks. I think the Rhino is just so fun to play. The damage output and just the mobility on the tank is, is very nice. It reminds me of like when the Yo was first released. The Yo was such a monster uh, for an auto loader. But uh, we're not speaking about auto loaders today. We're on the auto reloader, Kronwagen, and we're on Normandy, uh, not Normandy, Molendike as well. So I love taking the mid with the Kronwagen just because I have so much uh, hold down capabilities with this tank. With an impenetrable turret to many, except if you're playing you know a TD and you know with the recent nerf or with the upcoming nerf should I say with the WZ113 GFT I feel like this tank is gonna shine even more nothing's gonna be able to pen you hold down because I think tanks are gonna be now basically more heavies and uh, you can do a lot with um, going against heavies and stuff like that especially if WZ's aren't gonna be spammed anymore and so our team's doing a really good job on the far right, it looks like. They got an elite anilum there. I was able to keep that pattern down early on. And now what I'm going to do, seeing that the 50B is going to rotate for me, I'm going to get an accurate shot here with my Dispersion Consumable. And I'm going to put in another one. I'm going to save in the third one, because I do want to be a hard target for him to clip. And so I'm going to use this hard cover. And this guy's telling me to run in the chat. Um, but unfortunately, I don't think he knows who he's, uh, who he's uh, typing to. And so I juke him here on the right, thinking I'm going to keep going forward. And so it gives me just enough time to load in another show. And here, he hits my track. And I probably could have hit that shot. I just didn't want to risk an, an HE mishap, right? Knowing that, I'm not sure if my team would have helped me like, you know, like he just did there. But yeah, I was just going to aim in just a triple uh, triple shot there. No need to HE him there, um, if I can just guarantee the kill. Alright, so... I got some help with the uh, 50B. And I turn off my chat just because <laughs> I didn't want to say something that I was going to regret. I mean, not, nothing too crazy, just, you know, I didn't want to match his energy. So I'm just going to get down and I'm going to look for the flank on the M48 Pitbull. I'm going to get some easy shots at him here. Unfortunately, though, he overpeaks and he gets destroyed. And so I don't really have much HP to farm. But that being said, there's still three TDs in the game and I have a pretty big idea of where they are. Pretty much, there's a big bunker here where the 183 is, and I could have shot him here, the T95 that is, but I'm going to put in an HE, maximize my damage, put in two shells, and give the elimination to the tank behind me. And so, there's no reason for me to pick him up, especially with the lack of DPM I have if I fire my third shell. I'm going to put an HE in the grill, and I'm going to, you know, finally exhaust my uh, clip here. And he's not running spawn liner, so perfect for me. And so hopefully I can pick up this 183 as long as he keeps backing up. So I'm going to help him with that. I'm going to help him keep backing up away from the tanks that are coming from A. And I get the elimination here. Um, knowing that I have HP to sh uh, spare for him to hit me with Hash or AP. So again, a pretty solid game for us here to start the gameplay off. Um, and just because the Kron doesn't have the best TPM right now. And, you know, isn't the meta just because, you know, there's WZs flying around and a lot of TDs in the current meta that can easily pen your turret doesn't mean that it's a bad tank, right? I wouldn't say it's a really good tank right now. It's just, it's okay. And, you know, if you put an okay tank in a really good player's hands, I mean, a lot of things, a lot of good things can happen, right? Because it's all about, you know, the moves you make in the game, not, you know, what a tank can do. Unless you're playing tanks that are severely um, handicapped, in the meta which i don't really plan on playing because why would i put myself through that torture but anything decent anything okay or anything you know remotely decent i feel like you know deserves to be played um especially you know for someone that 
likes likes the game. You like to rotate tanks and you know not feel as bored when you play, and not spam the same tanks unless you know you're going for like a damage record or or something like that. But yeah, this 50B pushes up really early on C, and I know that my team is you know behind me, so I spam the attack button. I'm gonna get some really accurate shots here on the 6A that's pushing up. And one thing about the Kron that you know I think is gonna be even more um, used in the next update with the new DPM and everything is a dispersion consumable, right? So as you see, I mean, I don't pop it often, right? I only pop it when I want some very accurate shots when I'm going to be on the move at some sort of a distance or if I'm sniping in it, which is a very rare case. If I'm up close, there's no need for me to use it because, I mean, the tank is really accurate with the, uh, with the refined gun uh, and the Amy time consumable buff that they did. So here, I'm not going to waste my last show or even my second show on eliminating the 50B, but I also didn't want him clipping my 1A3. So I just popped the speed boost, get enough momentum to ramp kill him. And so now I have my full clip. So I felt like, you know, it's the best play to make. Get the full clip now, can full clip the TP, save my 1A3. And we're pretty much cruising to a, a first game, excuse me, a second game, easy speed run type of game. So I'm going to see if I can eliminate the TP, but unfortunately he's too focused on me. And he lets a 1A3 just destroy him. But now that I save that dispersion consumable, I can use it here for the bat chat. You see, now that it's at distance, I don't have to aim in too, too much. And I can maybe put a full clip here. But unfortunately, the bat chat gets nuked and I don't really have too much damage at the end of the game. So again, I mean, the dispersion consumable definitely, the reticle calibration consumable definitely helped me out there with that shot. But I mean, it would have been... Great if the back chat didn't die to everyone else, so. Second game, pretty solid. A steamroll, 7-0. Not really much you can do about that. I would have loved more damage, but I mean, I felt like I, I got the most of what I could with my DPM, so. Very good game for us. And so here we are in False Creek. Not my favorite map, but you know, if you're playing a heavy, I think it's, it's okay. Just cause, you know, you have more influence in the game. I feel like in mediums and lights, this tank is a bit tricky because let's say, you know, you, you're you confident enough to, you know, destroy the medium side, but let's say, I mean, your, your team goes full heavy side left and then they bring heavies out to the right. There's not really much you can do to run away and then give away the map, especially if your team is playing passive. So, I mean, yeah, again, not, not much you can do. I thought I put a decent accurate shot with uh, heat there, but unfortunately, I mean, the Yo turret is pretty... Um, tricky to shoot if you're not uh, popping that uh, radical calibration consumable as you saw there. I just wanted to shoot him without it. Unless I'm hatch sniping, which I wasn't really looking for. I see they have two 183, so I don't want to overpoke here on this chieftain. Knowing that I, I could probably get some really accurate shots in on the chieftain, but I really can't do much outside of uh, peeking him for them, so I can't do that unless the 183s are spotted or unless I know where they are, so. I know my team's pushing the tempo on the right with uh, TD and, you know, a light and a medium tank. And there's actually a TD in the middle of the map too by, by the encounter cap. So, you know, we're doing a pretty good job on closing in on this team, the enemy team, and putting them basically in a pinch where they either have to push up or they have to focus behind them, you know, in order to kind of, you know, save their game. It looks like their TVP was camping, as you saw him just get spotted now, looking to snipe, you know, our team pushing into them from behind. And so what I'm going to do, which, you know, this is why I was literally talking about this right now. I didn't want to make any moves unless I knew where the 183s were, but I just got a little impatient there. And unfortunately, I paid the price for it. I'm going to load in my last shell. Um, I could have shot the yo there, but I didn't want to be held to just one shot in the clip left. So I'm going to put in a shot here on the yo. And unfortunately, the, uh, <laughs> the in-between uh, reload for him during you know the first and second show are just insanely fast so he's able to get two shots into me and the yo bounces i'm um, not the yo the type comes down to try and kill me and bounces a shot at me but this is where the crown shines right and face hugs against tank that don't have you know the craziest penetration and you know you can just basically and gun depression obviously if he had gun depression he definitely could have just shot me in the hole but i'm doing my best to gun block him and uh use my um turret basically so he won't get a free elimination on me 
and you know he wanted to back up to use you know more gun depression and manipulate manipulate the gun depression but i wasn't gonna let him so i backed off and then he came closer so yeah we were able to easily get that uh 1v1 victory out of one shot and so i can push here but i mean i have that threat of the yo looking at me even though i do want damage in the chieftain um but i'm not gonna risk it here i didn't notice i had a bad gun so that shot was very inaccurate just because the gun was broken it was a pretty much accurate shot for me but inaccurate in terms of uh you know the tank's gun at the moment with that broken gun but yeah we were able to get a decent game not the best but we were, we were able to still do 3k for just a stomp of a game so yeah again not the best result for us but um a win is definitely much better than a loss for sure and that's what i play for mainly in these games is especially uh on top of the damage of course all right so here we are in vineyards i feel like i play uh, this map a lot especially in the recent gameplays i don't know what it is i feel like wargaming needs to give me a bit better map rotations um that being said i'm gonna definitely drive to town just because i can probably use the fountain on my left pretty well and i already have two tanks that are pretty capable hold down going to the middle of the map so in the double super conks so there's no need for me to go to the middle and as long as i can always keep you know uh, a good angle of crossfire with my allies i can always provide a very good chance uh for cover basically for my team and a better angle and a better chance to win the game basically if they're not yoling obviously so what i'm gonna do i'm gonna push left i'm gonna get to this fountain i already see most of your team spotted middle so i feel like i'm wasting a lot of time here um but you never know there might be like a td that's going solo here to see but that's not going to be the case they're going to push the tempo and i'm going to do my best to try and recover and trade with any tanks that are left behind here in the middle but let's see if i can spot anything here and see if i can help my team uh, eliminate them So, the enemy team is pushing very aggressive, we see this, but they still have some, a pretty bulk of tanks behind, and so I'm not sure how successful that's going to be. I thought I had a decent chance of penetrating the U100 there on the side skirts, uh, but unfortunately uh, the shell velocity isn't the best on the Kron, so even though I am running a supercharger I believe. So I put in a shot there, and I was going to go for another shot in the U100. But I wanted to wait till I was fully loaded, so I didn't take the shot. I'd rather be fully loaded and see if I can fully clip a tank. So I put in one shot in the 268. And since I didn't want to aim the second one, because we were going to trade a snapshot, I just load heat for the sure pen, knowing that he's probably going to shoot an angle. And if he doesn't shoot an angle, I can just escape there easily without getting shot at all. But we are already down two tanks. And I see that, you know, we do have the A cap, so we still have a chance. But looking at the minimap, they have pretty good position on us. Because um, we're all basically funneled in the middle. They're taking A, they have mid, and they have some of the left. So I, what I want to do what I want to do to the enemy team is I want to be a threat to the left-hand side. And so they'd only have pretty much middle to run to. And basically where my tanks are. And so I'm going to put in an accurate shot here on the E100. I put in this um, dispersion consumable here. Just because I did not want to waste any time aiming at the <clears throat> aiming at the 100 whatsoever i'm gonna back off knowing that the fosh and the minnow could probably be on my left and so i was able to spot up the fosh here again i'm gonna go for a fully loaded clip and i'm gonna put in one accurate shot here in the fosh again load heat so i really don't have to aim in all that well and not waste too much dpm and so i'm gonna go for the full clip here knowing that if i can get this minnow to a one shot maybe just maybe the grill can finish him seeing that the minnow is playing pretty aggressive and i see that the 100 will have shot under the bridge on me and i didn't realize that the girl was going to shoot the fosh just because the e 100 was right in front of him and so i took a pretty much free shot for no reason from the fosh basically so i see that the e 100 does want to shoot me so i'm going to keep driving away from him and i'm going to risk something here right i know that the minnow has shots to shoot at me right here but i'm gonna gamble on the on the heat show and unfortunately 
I think that's going to be the biggest change for the next update. When I shoot heat at a tank, it's going to roll for much higher damage just because of that uh, alpha buff that I'm going to have on my uh, shells. So yeah, I wouldn't have to worry about uh, taking another shot for a clipper or something that I want to eliminate with my heat shell and not have to expend the last shell. I felt like if I was able to eliminate that minnow, winning that game would have been far easier for me and I could have worked well with the grill to win it just because we had a very very big crossfire on the uh, E100 if you wanted to push me. So the girl could have probably easily farmed them until the 907 got there. And then I probably could have, you know, just worked my magic there and most likely would have won the game. But, you know, there's no what uh in this game, right? So I lost the game and on to the next one, right? I felt like maybe, well, not maybe, not taking that shot from the Fosh was probably um, the best play I could have made. But I, I just didn't expect the girl to pick him up i thought he would have picked up the uh the minotauro and i thought he had a shot in the minotauro but that was on me for not uh paying attention to where the girl was shooting and just expecting him to shoot what i thought he was going to <clears throat> so here we are in normandy right probably one of my favorite tanks uh not tanks one of my favorite maps for this tank just because there's so much hold down capability on this map I can go hold down on the far left, I can go hold down in the middle here, I can actually go in the bow where the T22 is and kind of take really aggressive map control. I can go hold down on the middle right side of the counter cap and I can also go hold down on the right side of A. So I mean, everywhere I mean is just a hold down haven. So I'm going to put in some really good shots here on the 215B because he's playing so aggressive. And here, I thought about shooting him and then I don't know where that shell goes. I thought that was a pretty accurate shell on the side and it just hits uh, the plane. It looks like, yeah, I don't know. I even had the dispersion swoop on, so I can't really explain where else that shot could have went. So here, again, I'm playing with headphones right now. And I heard the 268 get some ricochets off his superstructure. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go for these tanks on the left that shot him. And the T95 gets a bounce on me. I do have some pretty troll armor. If you're not aiming well, so he, the T95 was probably not aiming well, but you you definitely don't want to rely on this tank's side hole and, and all to get bounces. So I put an accurate shot there. I don't have my dispersion consumable loaded, but I can pretty much hit those shots on the daily. I just wait till I was fully aimed in. Got the accurate shot in the on the on the hatch of the T95. And uh, seeing that, you know, he's not really much paying attention to me. I'm going to switch to AP here, see if I can get a track pen. Um, but unfortunately, I couldn't. And I don't want to waste my last shot on picking him up. Just because my DPM is going to basically... Dra uh, dra it's going to drastically get, get much lower, so... My teammate picks up the 95, which is really good for me. Because now I'm basically with a full clip to clip any remaining tanks. Looks like a surefire win. We have all the map. They're basically on the A side here, uh, down in the map. I'm getting a lot of loss, which I've been getting here and there. But I think it was because I was on the wrong server cluster. And so I think after this gameplay, I, I switch off of it. And um, and yeah, I was getting some very weird lat spikes. It's definitely not my internet. I think I was on C1 or something. I usually play on C2. So I get in a really, really, really good shots here on the 6-8. And the uh, yo, of course, get a nice max roll on the 6-8 before there. And I load in the HE just because he's turning um, to shoot the tanks that are flanking him. And so, yeah, we get a really, really nice HE there to end things off because I don't think I'm going to get any more shots in the game. And rightfully so. I mean, our team played a very good game. Uh, they deserve to uh, pick up those last kills as I'm reloading. Alright, so we're able to do over 4k damage. Um, something that I don't think the Kron will struggle with next update. Knowing that DPM is going to be better, especially on the clip. And so I feel like 4k games are going to be the standard now uh, for the Kron coming up in the next update. I'm very excited for it. I feel like the Kron is such a strong tank. I remember when you know the Kron meta was a thing. I didn't like the whole camping situation with it. I feel like you know, if a tank has a clip... It'd be awesome just to see it, you know, played aggressive and some pretty cool hold down spots and all that. Not, you know, holding multiple different areas, hold down and kind of stalling up onto the map and all. That was pretty boring to watch, but 
um but yeah i mean it's gonna be strong but it's not gonna be the strongest tank in the game in the next meta so that's pretty exciting you know because you have such a strong tank in the crown that's going to be in the next update and you don't have to spam it there's going to be a lot of tanks that are going to be strong in their own right and so it's going to create a lot of variety in the game which we haven't really had in in a long time in tournaments and just basically in pubs right so i'm going to push the tempo here knowing that my tanks are on my left and i'm going to see if i can spot for my team since we all committed to this side of the map I don't have any shots in the 50B, so I'm not going to stop and aim. I'm going to see if I can spot out their TDs. But unfortunately, I don't want to be the guinea pig. So I let the Carl go out there and see if he can do that himself. Alright, so this is where I put in my Disruptor Consumable when I know I'm going to go for some snapshots. I thought the 1A3 was an AFK, so I kind of wasted it here. But uh, it's completely fine. I was able to hit the last shell in the grill there, so I guess it wasn't completely wasted, you know. So we got a free elimination on an AFK 1A3 and we got the grill to leave its position on the left, meaning we have the entire town side of the map for us. But just because we have, you know, one side of the map, right, doesn't mean it's a surefire win. And what I'm going to do, and what I'm going to do here, instead of just camping in town, I'm going to provide my team with spots. And I'm also going to create some sort of angle of cross right here with the Leo that's also going to push up with me. So he's going to push up to the middle. And so I'm just going to take the left. And so tanks are forced to look one way and one of basically me or the Leo can put in some pretty accurate shots on him. And if, you know, the rest of the enemy team wants to snipe, they can snipe as so. I'm going to take as much map as I can, little by little, inch by inch, and uh, kind of secures, you know, the wind more and more as I keep driving up and taking map away from the, uh, from the enemy team. Again, I'm waiting for my full clip and that's when i'm able to put in that first shell i put another accurate shell with the dispersion consumable on the su as you can see i could just hit these snapshots all day the gun is pretty accurate as is and then you add the you know the radical calibration on top of it which is the dispersion consumable i mean it's just it's crazy the the snapshots you can hit in this tank i could have shot the shared in there but again i didn't want to waste you know my dpm knowing that i was almost reloaded on that last shell and so here I'm going to aim for an HE, as in, I have so much HP to aim in for it, but, you know, I'll save it for the next shot. And so I'm going to wait till he gives me the perfect angle on the bottom, and get that really nice HE max roll, which is amazing for me. Maximizes my damage potential for the end of the game, and gives me a higher chance to do, you know, 4k to just finish off uh, this gameplay here, as this is probably going to be the last game. I was going to risk another HE. But it's like, I mean, I have so much HP, I'm just, I just want to guarantee damage as quick as possible and I don't want to kind of negate my DPM. So I'm going to put in one more shot here in the SU and I'm thinking that the Karo is going to, you know, finish him as he's sniping behind me. But unfortunately, I think he bounced all his shells. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I'm going to put in a shot here. Unfortunately... I could have probably just stood there instead of driving backwards and I, I think that kind of uh, threw my shot off a bit. And as he turned and angled you know, his track, he was able to get the elimination. And unfortunately, the car picks up the kill and kind of stalls me away from, you know, four kills. But I mean, overall, pretty decent gameplay in the Kron. Another strong 4K game. And it just shows you, you can average pretty high damage numbers in this tank still in the current meta before the next update. It's just a very strong tank. It all depends on how you play the game and what positions you're taking and how you're affecting the game, you know, with your position and uh, for yourself, basically. I mean, I do things a lot for myself first, right? All right. So here I'm just looking at where I shot. And because I was driving backwards, my shell wasn't stuck on, you know, one part of the tank. But as I was saying, I mean depends on your positioning and hopefully you guys learn a bit more and more as i post more videos on how to play a bit better but um thank you guys for watching and i'll definitely catch you in the next one see ya